And we're back everyone. This is gonna be our third test today. Uh, if you're new here, this is our route going through Hendersonville, North Carolina. And we are going to all these. Uh, it's just a standard test route. I actually did this route yesterday on 10.11. Um, and this is 10.11.1. And so far, spoiler, it has been better uh, than 10.11. Now that could be a spiel fluke. Um, traffic is basically the same. Um, so it, it could be just by chance that it was better. Or it could actually be better. They've retrained the neural nets in some way. And it does better detection. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm excited to see how this does. This is always an interesting, interesting drive. Nice Model Y right there. <laughs> that interesting. I'm hoping at least other Tesla owners understand if they see another Tesla being really weird and making weird <laughs> movements, they're like, they're probably in full self-driving beta. They're probably letting the car drive itself. Um, hopefully, they um, at least they know. It's, I wish more people knew about this program. I don't know if that would be a good or bad thing. But at least more new. So we where we are going, the lane it got into, this is the appropriate lane. Because we are taking a, uh, a right right here. This is the appropriate lane to get in. Ooh, it bricked there for some reason. It bricked for those yellow lights. It shouldn't have. The turn single logic's being kind of weird. It like goes on and off. It's not consistent. And this guy behind me is kind of tailgating me. Still not gonna do it. Wow, okay. I'm gonna disengage there. May I don't know, you guys tell me, well, I'll explain when we get here. You guys tell me if you think that should be a disengagement or not. Because it's just it's not doing it right. Uh, navigation is wrong. Um, but yeah, I'll explain once we get there. Person walking here, is it going to freak out? No. That did great. I expected in the past that person that was walking uh, at a steady pace towards me, the car would freak out and try and brake or swerve. There's a Model S, so that's a repair center um, back there, and there was a Model S sitting there. I wonder where I, I wonder what type of wreck it got into. I do have to say that phantom braking is substantially improved. Like, well, that's the disengagement. It hasn't done that in a long time. Let's go ahead and do a camera button here. This is where we're gonna disengage. My waypoint is even right here. It should go down this road. It makes no sense to go to the light and then back around. Especially this time of year when the camera can easily see. Um, can easily see uh, traffic that's coming from behind me and you can see this car is coming right here but we got out soon enough to where it doesn't matter so a phantom brake right there again one of the first phantom brakes for the entire time and that wasn't an actual disengagement I just had to turn of course I'm gonna turn in here stop in here for all of couple minutes to get something real quick that I forgot yesterday and um we will head back out okay everyone we are back coming out of all these it, notice how it rerouted that's good holy crap that's the first time I ever let it complete that I'm um, still too close to the curb but that was the first time I ever completed that successfully um, I think maybe second time it actually successfully got into this lane so normally I would turn left here 
I want to stop past Harbor Freight. Uh, should, what I should have done is actually forced it to go in the left lane and got, gone the other way. But this is so close to the same. And it actually did a more complex maneuver to get into this lane. So that's good. Um, it, I'm actually pretty surprised it did that. That's what we're looking for. Um, continued improvements like that are what we were looking for. So a thought I just had, the light here on the right just turned red. That that red car just went through. Or, um, it was in the middle of the intersection when it turned red, but it was fine. But what if my car was able to see those lights turn and it already knew that the light was about to turn green and then it would you know calculate based on traffic that was coming what it, what it would do. Okay, the reason I disengaged is they was going way too fast and this is a parking lot. It's, it's not going to count. Uh, we will reconvene once we're getting onto the road and then we'll go home from there. Okay, everyone. Um, so I wanted to point something out. Is that it wants me to go this way. And that is most certainly not the way you want to go, at least in this car, out of this shopping center. If you had a cyber truck, Maybe a Model Y, that would be okay. But um, I will show you as we pass by, and once we get out of this, uh, out of this uh, shopping center, out of this parking lot. I'm like, curious. Uh, let's try it. Let's see how it does. Let's see how it does. Oh uh, well, there's a giant pothole here, so we're not gonna actually let it do that. Like gigantic like my wheel would not even touch the ground so we're not gonna let that happen let's see if I can get some data recorded for that type of pothole scenario so I'll show you once we turn up here there's a very steep exit out of that intersection or out of that uh, uh, exit up over there and it is not a place where, like, you have to go, like, one mile an hour or slower without bottoming out. And full self-driving just doesn't do that currently. And so we actually need to get in the left lane here. It doesn't know this is a right-only turn lane. But for the sake of the video, right here is where it would come out right here or the next one. Both of these are really steep. And it's just, it doesn't look that way from the video, but they are really steep. So let's go ahead and get over. This is a right only turn lane into the mall. We don't actually want to be in this lane. Same mistake this car is making here. This happens all the time. Um, it look, both cars are doing it. I've even seen a truck go up and over this median right here because they got in the wrong lane. I do not find that to be an acceptable practice for a robo-taxi. A robo-taxi, regardless if it's ever been in an area before, should know it like a human does. Like, I've lived here my whole life, I know that's a right-only turn lane. If another Tesla comes down to visit Hendersonville, and they've never been here before, it should know not to get in that lane. It, I, everyone thinks the car is going to drive as if it's seen the area for the first time ever. That's not the way it should ever do. Um, if that is the case, like it's a Tesla has never grazed like a specific town in the middle of Alaska or some remote area, then maybe uh, that that's acceptable. But once a Tesla has visually seen an area. Uh, in the future, the way they have with AI Day, it is going to have every area mapped from every direction. Uh, eventually, they're going to have every single lane and every single direction uh, is going to be mapped on how the car can uh, drive. I don't know if mapped is the right word. It's going to be analyzed, if you will. And so the car is going to know ahead of time 
where to go and the best way to do it without map data. Uh, without, okay, without HD maps. These aren't HD maps. Uh, and I think that's something I wasn't very clear on in my previous videos. Is these are not HD maps. These are just normal visual maps. And this, they will use this. I think maps are, these type of maps are required um, for, the car won't know where to go otherwise. It, this, the map database is like the same as our brain. Like we know where to go because we have internalized maps in our head of where to go. We know what road to take to get to where. The car doesn't have that. And it has to rely on these maps to know where to go. And the same way we rely, see like why isn't it getting over? Like this, this is um, this is newest for 10.11. It gets over later. That it previously, at least it turns the blinker on, but it gets over later. But yeah, in terms of um, the map data, we use this. So we we are going to a new area, and we look at this map. It's not very detailed. We have to rely on it to be able to um. Virgin. Good merge, good merge. Oh, uh, no, okay, I thought I was gonna try and go over again. Now we're good. But yeah, um, the map data, while not the de detail, we might see this and like, okay, which lane do I get in? The car's gonna know. The car's gonna know ahead of time. It can analyze this map miles ahead. Like, unlike us as a driver, we can't be staring at the map while the, uh, we're trying to drive. Uh, we can't do both, we can't multitask. A computer can multitask. It can just analyze and know the map ahead of time before it even gets to an area, which means it'll always make the right turn decision once it learns the logic. Once it learns, hey, you should be in the right lane at least about a, you know, a mile ahead of time for this area because if you're not already in the right lane, there's gonna to be too much traffic for you to go get into the right lane, at least easily. And so we wanna get ahead in the right lane beforehand so we don't have to worry about changing lanes and make a situation more difficult. Hope that makes sense. Uh, but uh, if it doesn't, please comment down below and um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, that logic. I don't know if this is placebo, I don't know um, what, but it does seem like it gets off this exit a little bit smoother than it did. It could just be the situation, but then again, that was a pretty hard break right there. It's like it just all of a sudden recognizes it's a stop sign right there, and it's like jams on the brake. Now, this intersection has always been bad. Like, it's totally open. This is improved. Yeah. That's improved, everyone. Uh, the way it's been improved is previously it was so hesitant, it would it, like it would just almost stop in the middle of the intersection. It would just so unconfident. That was actually really good. Um, it, mind you, it can be better. I I'm I'm a perfectionist, and that could have been better. Could have just it could have been more confident going through, but at least it didn't like stop. Like it slowed. It was slow, but it just kept on going. That's that's what we want to see. That was an improvement for sure. And that makes this second half of this video zero disengagements. I am not even sure now if, um, I am trying to think back if we had zero disengagements. The title will say it, um, but I, I, there's so many stops and now I that can't remember if we actually had it. We, if anything, we only had one disengagement. Um, I can't remember for sure. Oh no, we, no, we definitely had the one disengagement. Um, two if you guys want to count it in the comments with the map data 
I'm not going to count that one personally. We'll see. I think that was a good drive. I'm happy with this version. My goal next weekend is to go to Asheville and make videos there. Uh, if you have questions for me on this video, feel free to put the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.